It's still building. We'll switch back over. There we go. Doing its thing. I suppose, uh, really, the, the build was unnecessary. I could have just restarted the, the Nginx container. Maybe I'll just do that anyway. It'll be faster. Uh, and then the other stuff can be ready when it's ready. Restart. Lots of CPU being used for for the build. Uh, uh, this is running. No logs apparently. How about now? Oh right. Um. I don't know, it seems to be restarting a lot. It's not a not not a good look. Can we? It'd be really great. Is if I could just see the logs, I would know what's going on. I don't see why you can't show me the logs, Docker. There you go. Uh, invalid value. Valid value. Okay. I could have sworn I saw, uh, maybe I misread the, the documentation. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Proxy read timeout time. Uh, I was looking, I, I saw the off there. That's not. <laughs> okay, what, what's the valid value? Hey, brainless. Hello, how's it going? What's a value what's a valid value for time? Is there a definition of, of these things? Also, yeah, you, you need to stop that. <laughs> what if I just set it to zero? Uh, doing all right. Thinking if I should work or play Mind Over Magic. How am I? Um, all right. <sighs> I uh, spent a bunch of. I spent most of yesterday actually playing the the Planet Crafters. I, I looked back at the name of the the game actually. Could have the the in front of it. Um, and, and, and coming along on that, I, uh, I'm glad I didn't wait for the, the person whose playthrough kind of inspired me to ch check out the game, uh, <laughs> because they're, they're taking forever to post the, the, it's a, it's like a YouTube series it's taking forever to, to post the next one. And I don't want to watch, I didn't want to watch any other ones because, he, um, at least the person that I'm watching they're like going through, um, they're not looking ahead at all in like the tech tree, um, you know, so they're not spoiling anything, um, from, you know, what I saw from their playthrough, I wouldn't want to watch anyone else's because they might, you know, look through things or know more about the game versus kind of like a blind playthrough. And now I'm, I'm way ahead <laughs> of that person's playthrough, um, been kind of ch just churning through. Uh, let's see. Yeah, how to warp socket proxy. Yeah, it can be increased. 
Um, maybe cannot be disabled. Yeah, it looks like we're still restarting. Yeah, nine. Th okay, that was three minutes ago. Let's let's. Oh, it's running. Oh well. I guess zero is is a valid value. I'm gonna find out. Can I? Yeah, show timestamps. There we go. Did did I remember correctly that you were saying you just started a new uh, a new run of Mind Over Magic Brainless? How's that going? If so, would you? <laughs> uh, can't establish a connect. Oh. First of all, Firefox being frozen is not very helpful. Okay, there we go. Um, so we just ignore the warnings. It's fine. Are we still building? Is that what's going on? Yeah, things are slow. Yeah, by force. Is, yeah, yeah, your computer was formatted. Yep. Uh, have you, have you gotten very far into that or have you, have you gotten, uh, I don't know. Are there, I mean, I guess there are the underground, like that boss, um, in, in terms of milestones. Yeah, never mind. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be spoiled. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will only. I will only be playing that on, on, on Fridays, I think. Not saying that, all right. Okay, so. Something, something went wrong. Uh, 504 gateway timeout is interesting. Oh, is this because the, the service restarted? Are we, are we there? No. Okay. So let's see how long, right? So we, we do reconnect, right? So we reconnected here and then it failed again. So how long, uh, <laughs> one minute, Uh, update should be up soon, though. It's already in the privileges branch. Interesting, interesting. Well, I, I guess I'll have to look. I'll try to remember to look at the... Uh, if if it's out by Friday, look at the, the notes of what's changed. And I guess maybe have to decide whether the changes are substantial enough to, like, restart or just continue... Uh, the the, uh, the current playthrough. So why why is it failing once a minute? It will be backwards compatible. Sure. Yeah, once a minute, uh, we get an error. Five oh four gateway timeout. So I think that's coming from Nginx, dropping the connection. Yeah, upstream timed out. So... I guess zero means just what the default is. <laughs> do that uh, on my current run I am just on day 10 
and done so much research as they started with a, uh, uh, a lightning mage. I made the mage's tower already, so I have most of the basics even foundations. Nice. I forget how the the game starts. Do you do you pick who you start with, or does it like roll it? Um, is it like can you re-roll? I mean, I guess you can re-roll who you start with. I just I don't know. I might. I don't know. There's something to be said for starting a new run. I mean, you pick two or three mages, re-roll and pick the one type. You know, I see see all right so let's see I think I'll have to wait a minute here <laughs> to see if if this is the setting that's causing it to drop the connection every minute But in the meantime, what I can do is, once Firefox is resp responding again, again this is because, um, oh, I dropped it. Okay. So let's see if this happens again in a minute. BRB, all right. Um, I mean, alternatively, it could be something on the Axum side of things, or maybe something where I need to add more logging to um, Nginx to surface more information. I don't know. We'll see. Or see if I can add more logging inside of uh, the task API service. Or I wonder if there's some interaction between Nginx and Axum that's going on. What's going on over here? Oh yeah, health checks. Yes. Forty-three. Did this? Yeah, this just happened. Okay. Great. Interesting. We didn't get an error though. About a uh, timeout, like we were before. Maybe, um, maybe that's a coincidence. So when the task API, did it just restart? I can't see in this compact view. Task API, uh, no, two hours ago. Okay. So it didn't just restart. I was thinking that could be a thing since the build is, is, is underway. Uh, well, that's unfortunate. Let's go look at the logs and task API and see if there's anything here. Connection closed. 9.15, okay. So nothing, nothing recent. <laughs> Great. Wonder what this means. Setting context when skipping handshake. And then back to proxy. What are we seeing? So we're not seeing that that timeout error anymore. So whatever is causing the connection to drop. Ooh. Yeah, um, I feel like my perception of the world 
uh, years ago was that everyone, despite the fact that everyone said, don't use Q-tips in your ear, everyone did that. Um, there's, there's in the ear and then there's in the ear. Um, point being, it's pretty, uh, risky to put anything in your ear, you know, you, a careless bump and you could, uh, you know, uh, damage something, but, uh, blood in the ear is probably not a good thing. I would suggest talking to some, some kind of medical professional about that. Um, this is not good. I can't say I've ever had uh, that kind of situation. Getting an appointment for tomorrow. Good. Hope they uh, sort that all out for you. So, uh, I guess Axum. So, so the example code that I originally used here, um, let's see. So we ended up with something kind of similar here. We have a, a WebSocket handler. Uh, I didn't care about getting the user agent stuff. So I just called this WS on upgrade, which then uh, called handle socket and then handle socket. Um, so this this code, this was something I stripped out to send a ping back to the, to the browser. It says send a ping unsupported by some browsers just to kick things off and get a response. Uh, receive a single message from a client. It's likely be the pong from our ping or a hello message from the client. Um, so the question is, wait, is there uh, is there an example here where we are? Maybe, um, maybe the issue. Let's, let's go back here and let's test something. So 57, okay, so if I were to click this. Aha. Um, interesting. All right, we crashed. <laughs> is, the, is, is it services are restarting right now? Is that what's going on? Yeah, seconds ago. Okay. So that was poor timing on my part. The build just finished. Okay. What I, what I wanted to test here though was if the issue with the connection dropping is like effectively like a, a, a timeout issue. And so if I got a message um, sent from the server through the WebSocket, would it keep the connection alive longer? So let me refresh. Okay, so cool. And then, in, okay, so we're connected. Good. Um, I want to wait 16, 15, I want to wait um, maybe like 30 seconds so that we can see if the time between the connection and the reconnect is more than. Um, a minute. So maybe it's been like 20 seconds or so. Maybe it's been like 30 seconds. I'll, I'll wait until the time says 9.51 for me. I'll click the button and hopefully that'll work out. Because this, when I queue the task, there we go, message from server. All right. 
50, uh, uh, 49 seconds. So the question is, will I get a message here in just a few seconds? Or will the disconnect and reconnect happen a minute from this point? And, or will it not happen at all? Um, I guess my theory is that if the WebSocket is set up and no traffic happens after the connection, um, things get torn down, maybe by Axum and the, the library it's using. And um, I, don't, I don't have any other theories. So we'll see. We'll see what, what goes on with this. Uh, it's funny how kind of th this, the, the purpose of this is to make it so that I can get immediate feedback on when things are completed. And I think this will be useful in general for the application. Uh, what I really want to do right now is just have a little thing that indicates when, when stuff is happening. Um, so I don't have to refresh. And then I think the other part of this that I wanted to look at was to use browser notifications um, so that I don't even have to have this tab. Uh, like I don't have to have the browser window or tab up to be able to know when the, the job is done. Uh, because often like I'll have the, the like this page up, but it will be on a different desktop. Um, you know, one of my dozen or so Firefox browser <laughs> windows uh, with, you know, 100 tabs each or whatever. Um, so that that is that is kind of short term what I want. Um, and then th this ties in with more of figuring out how I want to handle asynchronous processing and kind of asynchronous workflow for um, this application in the future. I have been thinking more about in the future doing maybe some stuff with AWS, um, which is is closer to the kinds of things I um, have done in the past for work stuff. But thinking about the fact that I have a lot of data, I have a lot of video files, and a lot of those are now archived into S3, um, just with like a command line script. I did, I, I do actually have a task in the, um, in the project backlog to um, kind of automate archiving the, like the raw video footage and all of that. But I have been thinking about um, how I might do more like video processing and extraction and you know all of that stuff uh, in AWS. Um, there's a lot of a lot of possibilities there. I would probably like as it is. You could probably just take this this set of containers, right, and you package them up and you use uh, ECS or something to uh, to deploy the the containers, you know, on top of EC2, right? Just like uh, running in AWS, um, but thinking about um, kind of more. like specific services that are available there. Like, uh, I don't know, like AWS batch, uh, Lambda is the thing, but I don't know. There'll be, um, some things that, that would be practical there, but a lot of other things that would take longer than 15 minutes to run. And so wouldn't be practical to run inside of a, a Lambda function. You, know, you could, you know, pull things out into parts. Um, which I guess effectively is is um, what I've done with um, like the transcription task, where it 
you know, is processing separate video files. Maybe, you know, processing each video file takes well under 15 minutes. And so maybe Lambda makes sense there. So what I'm observing though, is it's been like five minutes and we've not gotten an error. So I think what I need to do is I need to copy paste the, uh, the code that was provided here uh, that I actually originally had in the, uh, the backend code for handle socket and, um, and put it back, right? We'll just, we'll send an initial ping message I don't know why we'd send one, two, three. We'll just send an empty vector. Uh, we don't have a who. So client. Doesn't matter who it is. It's the client. All right, and then Docker Compose up. Hopefully it'll be uh, much faster this time. So what's next? We've actually got this working so that the, the, the web socket doesn't go away. We're not spamming it or recreating it a bunch as components get unmounted and remounted. Uh, I guess the next thing to do is we got this message, but the number didn't go up. Uh, so that, there's supposed to be a number here, right? Every time that the message comes in. Um, but that didn't happen. Ooh. I think another thing that I could potentially do, um, let's move this out of the way. Uh, we don't need to be in this file anymore. Another thing I could do is instead of, um, counting every event, if I could count events based on the key, or the ID, I guess. Then I could have a count that's based on... Nah, nah, I think I want the count to reflect like how many things have happened, not how many um, things things have happened to, right? <laughs> so in other words, I want a count of how many status updates there have been, not how many things have had status updates. Um, okay, so theoretically, there we go. We, we disconnected and we reconnected because the, everything restarted. Um, there, now everything is restarted. Uh, so the question is, so this dispatch, like we should be calling it from subscribe to task status and in data provider right from our subscribe method which gets invoked here after we parse the event data right so we got um as an example message from server and then event.data, right? And then this is a string that just got console logged. Yada, 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 all that, all that. All right, so then we parse that, and that becomes a message, and we call it, we pass that message to the callback. So then in here, like when we saw that, um, task status, so in, in other words, count would have been incremented. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's add some console log here as well, uh, to see what's going on. And I'll just do a hard refresh just to make sure we have all the current things. 
Um, so if I click the button, there we go. So you can see reducer object event reset. So that should set the count to zero. So that, that part is at least working, right? You click the button and it triggers a dispatch with the event to, uh, to with, with, with this. So if I start silence detection, okay, interesting. We, we get this message from server, but I don't see the call to the reducer. So why not? Uh, let me see. Ooh, excuse me. Um, so sus subscribe to task status is this. Let me call subscribe here on the instance. And that pushes callback onto the list of subscriptions. Appends new elements to the end of the array. Oh, interesting. It returns the number of items. Who knew? <laughs> um, wait, hold up. Let me let me let me check an assumption. Let's put that that reducer console log back. Do we hot reload? Looks like we did. And we have subscribing check. Okay, so if I click this now, if I click it. There should be stuff there. Let me refresh. Okay, subscribing to task status, getting WebSocket instance connected to, why are these out of order? Huh. Okay, so that's in here, right? So that's that's when we get to here, right? And then we call this method and pass dispatch to it. Um, and then this method then gets the WebSocket instance and that triggers the connection. So at that point, like if I start silence detection Why is there no message? I am confused. Like we should see console log message from server. So I broke something by changing task API. Maybe not. I don't see how I would have. Huh. Eh, the warnings aren't relevant. Requests. Yeah. Sure. Message event listener, add event listener message. So why?
Yeah, we're posting. Two to accepted. Sure. Okay, let me try refreshing. Oh. I know why. So when the message is uh, when the when the task is initially added, its initial status is queued. Currently, the task worker. Um, I mean, it, it, if it's queued, the task worker hasn't even looked at it yet, right? It is. It is queued. It's not processing. So what's happening right now is that. I'm clicking start silence, detect silences a bunch, but there's already stuff being processed. And yes, okay. So nothing that I'm doing right now is triggering the change in status of a task, right? So the task, task has to go from queued to processing for there to be a an event that gets put across the WebSocket. So previously I was able to click this button because there wasn't a lot of stuff. Uh, there wasn't, there was enough room for tasks to be processed and now there's not. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is we have the, the thing to intercept the message. We have, um, this console log here for the producer. Let me, let me go here. Clear that status. So what I would like to see is, um, a message here saying, Hey, we got, we got a message. <laughs> from the web socket that the status changed, which we've seen that before. I've lost that now because I've cleared the, the log since. Um, and then what should happen is the count should increment and we should see a number here. Can we, can we go over to the components train? Badge content zero, color primary. So this should go up the next time we get a message. See, look, we got messages. Always off doing things. So we got message from server, message from server, message from server, message from server, but no calls to the reducer. So why? So like this callback is this maybe let's check something um let's go into the debugger let's add some breakpoints in the code so in data provider So when we when we uh, get into this, let me double check the callback is the thing that I think it is. Um, and then in in WebSocket, when we get the message inside of here, we can look at what that event data looks like, and we can look at the callback as well. 
Uh, well, we can look at this that subscriptions from from here. Um, should be good. Okay, stuff is processing. So we're just kind of waiting for the next event to happen. That triggered one of uh, one of the breakpoints. So, uh, while I wait for that, how do you, uh, like browser notifications work? It's been a while since I've looked at that. Uh, do some quick Googling. I don't think they're called that. They're like test something notifications. Let me just look for maybe MDN notifications API. There we go. Notification interface, notification API used to configure and display desktop notifications to the user. Creates a new instance of a notification object. Uh, how about examples? Okay, we're looking for like notification app permission. Is this going to work? So creating new new a new notification is literally creating a new new notification. Uh, and we'll, we'll figure out the permission stuff and whatever. Um, so where does said notification get created? Uh -huh. I might create a component. Yeah. So a component that has a, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, again, we're still waiting for things to happen. Uh, let's, let's queue up another thing. There we go, queued. Um, so let's put that off to the side. So we'll see when that debugging starts. Um, and so in the task drawer, I might have like a um, notifications.tsx. Um, I wonder, can we can we try having Copilot just write a component? Um, create a React component that um, shows whether uh, notifications are enabled um, 
and generate vacations if they are. Something like that. Well, let's, I'm, I'm just going to accept it and see what, what it's generated. Turn on word wrapping. Okay. So, uh, it's not going to be exactly what I want because I don't know about heading, but uh, notifications are enabled or disabled, and then a button to enable or disable, and then a button to just generate a notification. Um, okay. Uh, this is not at all... Uh, what I want. Okay. Uh, change this to use the browser. Notification. API. Okay. Well, that. is interesting. Maybe, maybe say that same thing, but here. Mm, don't like any of this. Um, so what we're gonna have <laughs> Uh, we'll start with this. There we go. I don't think I'll be using use state. So hey, we got we got that much out of it. All right, hey look, breakpoint. Uh, so we we received a message. Uh, and the message event has data, which is a string as expected. Okay, so if I step over this. And we parse it. The message is an event uh, key with task status change. And then, hey, what is this that subscriptions? Why can't I hover over anything? Why must this be so difficult? Uh, can we look at scopes? There we go. This subscriptions is empty. Why is subscriptions empty? Um, that's a question. We have a WebSocket and an empty set of subscriptions. Interesting. Okay. Well, that that's that's informative. All right, continue. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh, and we're we're going to see if that. That line that I put the breakpoint on gets called frozen. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so we do call subscribe. Interesting. So we can see callback here is this bound dispatch reducer action. So if we go back up the, the call stack. Okay, so here we go. And dispatch is this this method or this, this function. Right here. So that doesn't get passed through. So that, that's that's checked off. Here we go. This that subscriptions that push callback. And callback is that same bound Dispatch reducer action. So I step over this. Now subscriptions is an array with a single element. Um, so how can it be the case? Huh, okay.
That's interesting. Can we also maybe the this is this is not working correctly? Yeah. So now we have an array with two things in it. That shouldn't really be possible. What happens here? Okay, so we subscribe. We're subscribing to task status. We're getting an instance. We're getting the the web socket. So then we're connected. Then we're unsubscribing from task status, and we're subscribing. But if we unsubscribed and then subscribed, then we should have. Hmm. So if we step over this. Now it's empty. Okay. I'm gonna have to do something else here. So what's happening is, is that this is not working the way I thought, thought it was going to. So we're gonna put a pen into this whole notifications thing. Um, the idea is gonna be basically that this notification component is gonna go inside of the task drawer up here. So you can click into this and then there'll be a thing to like Hey, you, you, do you want desktop notifications? Click this uh, or turn it off. Uh, and if, if it's off and you turn it on, we'll check to see if we have permissions and then it'll be a browser pop up and the way that normally works. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, so the issue is, is that unsubscribing doesn't the way uh, doesn't work the way I was hoping it would. Um, I was hoping that um, like we could just use the, the the quality operator here on the on the function, but uh, I don't know why I thought that was going to work, but clearly it doesn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to change around what subscriptions is defined as. Uh, so we're going to do something where we have a callback and a um, an ID. Yeah. Oops. Sure. And uh, number like that. Uh, no, I don't like it. Let's do this. Um, I'm just gonna make a type. Uh, let's, ugh. Call it a subscription. Exactly like that. And then this will be a list of subscriptions. Uh, and then this is actually iterating through subscription. And then we do subscription at callback to dispatch out the, the message. And then um, what we're going to do is push this object and so ID will be so the reason I couldn't just have this still be an array and you keep track of the index is because if I start removing things from the array 
uh, then the indexes of later things would change. I could clear them out, but then the array would just keep growing. Uh, it's just gonna be easier to do this. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say const ID equals this, and then we'll just use that. And then when we wanna un unsubscribe, we just say, oops. I don't know, we'll just, come on, there we go. So take all the things where the subscription ID is not equal to the ID of the thing that we just created, right, this ID. Um, now this is also not going to work <laughs> because um, I guess there's not an unsubscribe. Well, there is an unsubscribe. And so the, the list can get smaller. So unfortunately, this is not going to work. What we need to do is we need to have like an internal um, max ID. Number. There we go. Um, and then what we'll say is this ID is there we go. And now that will monotonically increase, even if the size of subscriptions gets smaller. Uh, and hopefully that will prevent things from getting unsubscribed. Cool. All right, let's queue up another thing. And we'll keep an eye on things. But uh, Somehow, another hour has gone by, so it's time for me to take another break. Uh, but I'll be back in just a few minutes, and uh, maybe we'll get to those browser notifications. All right, BRB.